Hello and welcome to Welcome Back, the podcast where we reconnect with Snowy Mountains Grammar School alumni and hear about their journey since graduation. We're your hosts, Abby and Gracie, and we're excited to have you with us today. Each episode, we'll dive into the experiences of our alumni, exploring their memories of their time at Snowy Mountains Grammar School and spending time finding out how they are going in the world beyond the school gates. Welcome Back celebrates our stories in our community. Today we have a special guest with us, Carl Van Gogh. Carl graduated in 2013 and has since gone on to compete on the world stage in the World Cup for Snowboard Cross. And now is a coach for the Great Britain Paralympic team, bringing their first medal to them in the 2022 Beijing Paralympics. Welcome back, Carl. Thank you. How does it feel to be reconnecting with Smegs? Yeah, awesome. It's, it's crazy to walk around now and see... Um, to see how much has changed, but in, in the best possible way. It just looks like you guys have amazing facilities and classrooms. You know, most of my classrooms were in old sheds and, <laughs> you know, industrial buildings, and yeah. now it feels like more of a classroom, but yeah. no, it's great. So what was your best memory at Snowman's Grammar School? Oh, it's, it's hard to pin one, um, but I think in general all my best memories were the sporting events, that was just what I connected with most, you know. Uh, all the athletics carnivals and swimming carnivals and uh, going with the school up the hill, going snowboarding every Wednesday and doing the inter-schools and that was all just having... I think that's what made this school feel quite special is that they how much they supported that and just they went, you know what, we all live in the mountains, let's use that. Let's not do school on Wednesdays and let's go snowboarding. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like, we well like sport obviously, but do you like, were you an academic? Do you like the arts at all? Um, yeah, I tried, look, I tried to like art and I, I did art <laughs> for my HSC and I did music until year 10, I think. Um, but I think I was, I, yeah, I'm not actually that creative and I found that out through, <laughs> through, through taking those classes. Yeah. I want to be, I wish I was. <laughs> Same. Something about your s- about school that you wish you could still have in your life today? I think, I mean, I miss, do you know what? I miss Jindabyne. I miss living here. I, th- I think it's, you know, my parents have moved away as well. So I don't, when I come home or when I visit them, they live in Queensland now. So when I come and visit, I don't visit my home. Like this feels like my home. Yeah. And I don't get that anymore. So I think I just miss the place the most. And coming back to Jindabyne, all, all, all my old friends still live here. So you're a Paralympic snowboard coach for Great Britain. Can you tell us about the journey you've been on to get where you are today? Yeah, where do I start? Um, it, I yeah, I, when I finished school, I think I literally got on a plane uh, two days after speech day to oh. to Europe and just wanted to go get into it in the in the snowboard world, and that I did that for a little while, showed some promise. It was actually it was meant to be a gap year. I got into the oh. University of Wollongong oh, yeah. and I uh, deferred it for a year and I was like, oh, I'll go do a gap year, I'll go racing and do the, do, the, do that whole thing. And then it actually showed a lot more promise than I maybe had anticipated. Went there, did well, decided to do another one and then another one and then another one, you know, and eventually got on the World Cup and tried to qualify for the 2018 Games, which I didn't do um, through various circumstances. Got very, very close, but yeah, I didn't end up going to, to the Olympics myself. And then because I didn't go to that uh, kind of the financial side of the sport, for me, fell apart a little bit, didn't have a lot of money. Um, so I decided to do, because I hadn't gone to uni and hadn't done that, I went, well, I've kind of been to the, the school of this world. So I decided to try to find work in that world, which for me, you know, I've always found, uh, you know, connecting with people and trying to make them a best version of themselves, uh, something really uh, that I enjoyed so I thought coaching just made sense uh, so I just got into that and did two years of that just doing jobs here and there for different people different teams some national teams some younger crew uh, and then yeah got involved with the Brits in 2020 uh, which was a hell of a time to get involved with yeah. you know and, and try, try to travel around yeah. which is pretty that's another chapter and yeah it's, that's been me ever since and you know with them now for well, we're starting our fifth season now and getting into the next Winter Olympics this year's qualification year and then the Winter Olympics of 2026 coming up, or Paralympics. Yeah. You said that you hopped on a plane two days after speech day. Was 
did you have a plan to go snowboarding? Like, or did snowboarding start, you know, did Smegs introduce you to snowboarding and snowboard cross? Yeah, no, it definitely came from, from school here. Yeah. I, I grew up, so I was, I was actually born in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and I only, only immigrated to Australia when I was six years old. So I'd grown up doing some skiing holidays in Europe and then when we moved to Australia, we spent the first three years in the northwest in the Pilbara region uh, and it's very flat, very hot, very dry. Yeah. No snowboarding. <laughs> um, and then when we moved to Jindabyne, you know, we, me and my brother we were really keen to to get back into skiing, and we came here. And but it was never meant to be a, a venture of of professionalism. We just came and to enjoy it. But then through school and getting really encouraged to do inter schools, and you know, I, I did Parish of Winter Sports Club, which encouraged us to do. You know, we had the Australian Junior Series back in the day, and everyone did everything. You know, we did slope style half pipe, board across, big air, didn't matter. Everyone just did it all, and. Yeah, I guess just I showed some promise. I wasn't like one of those crazy talented kids either. I didn't I didn't learn everything first. I was always one of the last to learn stuff and just trying to catch up to all my mates. But I guess I just showed a, a very even rate of progression. And over time, I thought, oh, you know, after speech day, after year 12, I can have a crack and why not? But like I said, it was mainly meant to be a year. But then it <laughs> turned into, now it's been 11. So being here and doing inter schools a lot and like Wednesday sport, uh, mm. that had a significant impact on your career t- as being snowboard coach. A hundred percent. I think you know I I I would never I would there's no way I'd be where I am today doing this if I was if I didn't come here to school come to Smex. So a day in the life of you today, what does a typical work day look like? Naturally, it differs a lot because. Mm. Yeah, you know, my l- we, I, d- I don't just drive to work, go to work, and then come home. You know, we actually when I'm home, I it's generally my time off. You know, and when we go away with the team, we we have to travel somewhere, whether it's for a training camp or for a contest. Uh, but I guess I can run through a say a contest day because yeah. they're kind of interesting. Uh, generally, get up quite early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, make sure the team's okay. Norm- we're normally in a hotel all together, so we'll have brekkie all together, and then jump in the van, drive to the hill. Uh, and while the guys, you know, we'll, I'll generally do like an inspection with everybody, um, and then the guys and and girls have have training. They'll put me. I normally find so find some spot up somewhere where I can see the whole course with a camera and a radio, and uh, we'll just be in touch throughout the whole training process. But normally we try to have all the hard work done before then. You know, the training is really just to iron out little details, and and yeah, then then it's then it's contest time. Do the contest. Hopefully we do well. Yeah. Um, throughout the day, we you know me and the other coach are just making sure everyone's cool, chatting to them, keeping them relaxed. You know, no, not too much information. And then uh, if we do well, then we have a little celebration. And if there's another contest the next day, we'll have to do, you know, me and the other coach will go to the team captain meeting, get all the information, hang out with the team, probably do a lot of video review. I'll get all the footage off the camera, mm. put it on the laptop, do the video <laughs> review. They're busy days. Busy yeah. days contest for sure, which is why, uh, you know, we... Lots of standing and waiting as well. Yeah. And, mm. we, you know, we go to places like Finland in, uh, in January where it can be like minus 30. That's crazy. And then it's not... You know, it's 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 great. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but it's the, at times you're like, man, I wish I was sat inside. <laughs> <laughs> what do you find the most rewarding about being a coach? I mean, it's probably obvious, but you know, you're sharing. I, I'm just trying to empower other people to reach their best potential, and it. But it was, I will say, it surprised me how much. Obviously, coming from a background of having competed myself, when I started coaching. It surprised me how much joy I got from others, from their successes, as much as my own. It really is equal, if not more, because you know, I've never been one. I've never really cared about being the one in the spotlight. You know, I just enjoy a victory, whether it's like the when when one of my guys, Ollie, he uh, he w- see he won Great Britain's first ever medal at the Paralympics in snowboarding in Beijing. You know, that made me. It honestly felt like it was my medal too and the other co- and all the other staff and everyone else that was involved everyone had such an elation because of it yeah. um, 
I think that's definitely the most rewarding part. You know, it's it's wild. Yeah. You, you can really share. Just uh, we, I was just as happy as Ollie. Yeah, in like n- in a school it's like nationals, like Gracie's pretty good at it, <laughs> and it's like it's so like fun like to like watch the live timing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like just because I remember one year we were watching it and there was one I don't remember who it was there was one girl and she had to, we had to beat her, <laughs> and like we had just had to beat her. Yep, yeah, had, had, had to. And um, I remember me and all our friends and Gracie was on the course and we were like watching it. And the live timing came through, and we just all started screaming because <laughs> she beat it, and totally. it was it was it was so good. Man, you all share that, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, and that's yeah, it's always better shared anyway, like that. Yeah, uh, victory, but none of these uh, at that level of sport, um, no, none of these victories happen solo. Yeah. yeah, it's always a shared thing. Yeah, but even at inter school, it's such a low level, like you know, competition. But definitely, I would. It's not fun when. You're doing it solo. No. It's so yeah. much better when you have your friends. Exactly. Coaches. And it's yeah. you need that. And it's just as fun for them. As at, least, at least it should yeah. be. So there's no room for jealousy or any of that. <laughs> <laughs> just no point. Are there any projects or tasks that you're particularly passionate about right now? To do with my work or in general? Just in general, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously right now a lot of our focus in my work is going into preparing for... Uh, the 2026 Paralympics in, uh, in Milan Cortina. But outside of work, um, I'm really enjoying getting back into mountain biking. That's like one of my big drives right now. I, um, I, I did mountain biking when I lived here. I did it with school. Yeah, I do it too. Th- another thing that's got me into. <laughs> and, um, and I kind of dropped it for a long time because I, I was just doing back-to-back winters, focusing on snowboarding. And then now I live in a place. I live in, uh, in the French Alps in a town called Morzine. And it just happened to be one of the biggest hubs for mountain biking in the world, kind of in Europe. That's where everyone goes. So a lot of my friends there are really involved in the mountain bike world and I just went, well, I better get back into it. So I bought a bike and and I'm just really, really frothing on riding (laughs) my bike and getting better at mountain biking again, finding that feeling of the progression again. It's so good. That's every spare minute right now I'm trying to ride my bike. (laughs) I'm too scared to go mountain biking. Oh, yeah, I broke my thumb right before I came here. Yeah. It's, it's not if, it's when. Yeah. You're going to fall and it's dirt, yeah. dirt is a lot harder than snow. Yeah. And so are yeah. rocks. Trust me. It's so good that Trevor has the options for summer and winter. Snowboarding in winter, yeah. biking in, ma- in summer, so good. I know, I need to get back and actually have a look because when, I, when we used to do mountain biking here, there was one chairlift and there wasn't even the bike hooks on it. You just had to like kind of wrestle your bike onto oh. the chair with you. Oh. Like onto it. <laughs> and... Um, and there was one track. It was just the Cannonball track. Yeah, there's a lot more now. It's I've really heard. fun. I've heard. I've got yeah. friends from France that come here to go mountain biking Yeah. Oh. in the summer. There's lots of big events here too. Yeah, that Cannonball. looks amazing. I'd love to see it. I'd love to come back. But I tend to be quite busy in the winter, unfortunately. At Snowman's Grammar School, our ethos is to inspire a love of life and learning. As a lifelong learner, what are you currently learning about? I'm learning about everything. You learn every day. I, I, I learn from the people around me, mostly. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to work for a, a, an organisation. I work for GB Snow Sport, and they're really keen on having us connect with all the other snow sports teams. But even beyond that, we, I, we've, I've had consulting uh, calls and meetings with people that work in heaps of other sports, in, in football, in uh, Formula One, You know, people that are really keen to... Because all this, like, sport at the top level is is very, very similar, uh, no matter really what you do in terms of mindset, in terms of coaching, and how you um, how you guide someone mm-hmm. in that in that journey. So, as a coach, apart from the technical side of the sport, the the, the mental and psychological side is really similar. So, I've really enjoyed, oh, I do really enjoy um, talking to other people in my in the sport world, even. You know, especially the ones outside of snowboarding, actually, and and trying to learn from them. I think it's really important to try to take little bits of knowledge from all these people. Even if it might not seem relevant, you can probably get something that is really relevant from them. So where you currently live, is it Morzine? Yeah. Yeah. What do you love most about living there, apart from, I guess, mountain biking? Oh, it's just, it's great. I, I, I chose to base myself in Europe um, because, as you may know, Obviously, when, when you're from Australia and you want to do 
seasons uh, in the snow sports world, you're basically just leaving home for six, seven, eight months at a time. And for me, building a home in Europe and especially in the Alps, it allows me to not be away from home all Mm -hmm. the time because I have a place where I can get back to. And at the end of a, a long season, you can get really burnt out and really tired of just being on the road all the time and being in hotels and being in Airbnbs. Whereas if I get the chance, you know, if we have five days off and we're somewhere in Europe, I can just go home for five days and see my friends <laughs> yeah. and hang out and sleep in my own bed. And I think it makes a massive difference in my lifestyle and how I can, yeah, keep up, keep showing up my in my at my best for the team because I'm, I feel fresh and I feel recharged when I've just had a few days at home. So I guess that's what I love most about living there. But I do miss Australia a lot. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of French people. In France, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it'll obviously be like easier because you have a European passport. Yeah, that's right. Like I've got one as well. Um, my grandpa was actually from the Netherlands as well. Hey. Yeah, he was from where is it? Rotterdam. Okay, cool. Yeah, he was born there, and his dad worked on the docks somewhere. Like yeah, yeah. It's the biggest port in Europe. Yeah, right yeah. So I've got a European passport as well. Perfect. So, so you've got both. Yeah, it's honestly, it. it's so it's such a um, liberation. Like yeah. you, you have so much freedom. I love I've seen it now. Obviously, a lot of my friends in 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 um, Morzine, sorry, are, are from the UK, mm. and because of Brexit, oh. they used to have the right to be in Europe. Obviously, now they don't. They're basically equal playing field to an Australian or an American. Or mm. And just watching that freedom get taken away from them, it really made me realize how fortunate I am to yeah. still have it. I would love to have a European passport. Just yeah. want to do a gap year there after school, you know. Travel you can still around. do that. Yeah. You can yeah. definitely still do that. It's more like staying in the long term. Yeah. That's, that's trickier. How does like Morzine compare to like Australia? Like where you grew up during school, Jindy? It's funny. Like at the end of the day, they're basically the same, just in different <laughs> cultures. You yeah. know, Morzine is a is a small mountain town in France and there's a you know, there's a ski resort, there's a big lake. Um <laughs> And there's a, there's a school. And it's kind of the same as here, just full yeah. of French people. Yeah. Um, but obviously, yeah, French culture and Aussie culture is very different. But Morzine is kind of a collection of other foreigners. There's a, a huge expat community. Uh, so there's people from all over the world, a lot of Brits, uh, which is kind of how I ended up there, being involved with GB. Um, but also a lot of Canadian, Amer- uh, American, Australian, Irish, German, Dutch. And people from all over. So you can actually have, without speaking fluent French, you can have quite a normal life and you can have friends and a social life. And yeah, so I guess Sounds that's so cool. It's nice. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great spot. And it, it gives, they have such a strong summer season as well. It's really a town. It's like Jindabyne. Like a lot of places in Europe are just resorts. You know, it'd be like trying to live yeah. in Paris year round, which yeah. is just, There's no point. just <laughs> boring. So it's really, it's a town with a lot of year round residents. How do you stay connected with friends and build community where you live? How do I stay in touch with my friends? Yeah, well, like yeah, basically. Is a lot of your team, I guess, uh, is a lot of your team staying like in Morzine as well? And do you have a, like a community with them in Morzine? One of the, one of the guys lives in Morzine, but the rest don't. The rest they live all over Europe. Um, but I guess yeah, my because I do travel a lot with my work. I don't know, you just keep in touch with people. Yeah. And yeah. Just build a community wherever you go, I guess, is it? For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, always be nice to people. Just <laughs> chat. Yeah. Get eager to have a chat. Do you still keep in touch with any of your friends from Snowman's Grammar School? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I d- you know, it. you definitely lose touch with more people than you think you will when you when you when before you leave school, but... Uh, and that's ju- that's just normal, I think. You know, you go in different directions in life, but uh, obviously coming from here and still being involved in the snow sports industry, there was quite a few of us that did that. So there's definitely a lot of people, even from many years above and many years below me, that I still see around uh, that are also involved in the snow sports world, and that's really cool. And I love visiting when I come back down here, like now with the team. You know, I'm just back in Jindabyne for a month, so I've got a month to... Everywhere I go, I bump into people, and um, you know, you try to organise get-togethers and with people that you may have lost touch with over the years. But then, just because you're here, you kind of reconnect again, and and then do end up staying in touch. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, when I I went to Lavinio, like a 
nice. In January, yeah. And I saw so many people from like Parisha over there. Oh, really? And I was like, wait, what? Yeah, I think I'm going this coming January. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. that with Tony Byrne? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think. It looks cool. I think we're staying in Montefont and then. Mm. I think we're doing like a lot of trips around to whatever races there are. So I'm really excited. That's awesome. Montefon's a great place to base as well because it's so central. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why they chose it yeah. as well. What do you enjoy doing in your free time? Like any hobbies? Is it just like mountain biking, I guess, <laughs> in summer? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I just go through phases, hey. Like I, <laughs> I, at the moment, I'm just absolutely stoked on mountain biking. But um done a lot of rock climbing i basically just love being outdoors i just do all this all that stuff when i'm not working i'm just trying to get outside and rock climb mountain bike hike in the mountains just go take my hammock and sleep somewhere sleep in a forest or up on a top of a <laughs> cliff or you know just enjoy you look like you've seen a ghost <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> i would love to do that well i'm really fortunate obviously to have this job that allows me it's a, I work hard when I'm on the road with the team. When I'm off, I do have a lot more yeah. time off than, than most people. Yeah. You know, when how long is your off season? Well, we only compete from November to March. Yeah, Essentially, right. the rest is the off season, but that's when we have to fit in all our training. Yeah. So obviously right right now we're here for a month doing training pretty much six days a week up on, up on snow and down here uh, trampolining on the airbag in the gym. Frisbee golf. Oh, yeah. Very important. Um, I suck at that. But yeah, when <laughs> because we've got like a, such a concentrated uh, time now, we've got, uh, I've had like a month and a half off basically before we came here and I've got a month and a half off when I get home. Yeah. And I still do emails or keep in touch with the team, you know, but I'm essentially home. I'm not yeah. on a trip with the team. And so that creates like a pretty good work-life balance. Great work-life balance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All my friends in Morzine, because I never work in Morzine, they were just they d- they don't think I have a job. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you said you've you've travelled around Europe a lot. Um, there, what's your like favourite place you've been? I really like. I mean, just for outside of snowboarding for a minute, um, just the travel. I think Eastern Europe, by far, best place. All all those countries like Poland, Slovakia, Slovenia, oh, yeah. Czech, uh, Bulgaria. You know, all those countries I've been to, Every anytime I go east of of Europe, I just have the best time. It's so cheap. People are so friendly. And, yeah, highly, highly recommend going to any of those countries. Because um, no one else does for some reason. Oh. Everyone just, well, everyone just stays, you know, when people go to, like, yeah. do Europe, they go to Italy, yeah. France, yeah. Spain, Greece. But off the beaten track, it's so much cheaper and everyone's just lovely. Everyone's really, really happy to see you. Everyone's happy to have a chat. And you can snowboard there too, to be fair. Yeah. We had a, back in the day, we had a couple of World Cups in Bulgaria. And they were some of my favourites. <laughs> so good. Okay, we've got some fun questions here. So, if you could spend a day doing anything you wanted it, wanted it to be, what would you do? I mean, I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. Most days I do yeah. whatever I want. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm probably repeating myself a little bit, but I just... Hang out outside, go and yeah. climb, bike, snowboard with my friends. That's where I get my most joy. Yeah. What's one thing you've learnt about adult life that you wish you'd known earlier? I think it's not like I didn't know this before mm-hmm. adult life, but um, one thing that I've I keep learning over and over and over again is just be nice to people, because not and even not just for other people's sake, for your own sake, because you never know where an opportunity is going to come from. Like all my opportunities have come from people. Like they don't, that's, that's where, that, that, that's where things come from. People wanting to give you a shot and give you a chance. And it, if you're just nice to people, everyone you meet, give so, you know, give someone the light of day, the time of day, sorry. And just, if you're nice to them and you make a good impression, they'll remember that. And then when they're, when someone's looking for, someone goes, oh, you know, I met this really nice guy. Um, he'd be great for this, whatever whatever you need, if it's a job or just a an opportunity for something. And I think that just I I keep hitting situations where I'm like, wow, oh, I'm so glad that I met that guy and I was really nice to him because now he's given me this opportunity. So, quick fire round, just first thing that comes to your head. Okay. Um, what was your first job? Uh, dishwasher, Jindy Seafood. 
doesn't exist There's anymore. There's a seafood shop? Yeah, there used to be a fish chip shop. It's where the Baby Das is now, under the gym. If you could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would it be? Winston Churchill. Good man. I love World War II stories. You know, I'm sure he'd have some insides. Um, keep them, uh, Robin Williams. Yeah. My mum loves him. Yeah. Oh, that makes me feel old. <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> I'm joking. And uh, probably my grandma. She's been dead for like 10 years, so it'd be nice to talk to her again. What is the best book or TV series you've recently read or watched? World War Two in Colour on Netflix. I've seen that. I've never seen that either. Really? Watch it. It's like, it's they they found all this old footage uh, oh. that was obviously in black and white and, and they've like put colour in it and oh. then told you all the stories about... It's like going to history class, but way, way better. It actually sounds really interesting. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Are you best in the morning or the night? Morning. Morning person, same. Mm-hmm. Same. Oh, wha- who would you like to play you in a movie? In your own movie. In your own movie. A movie about me? Yeah, yeah a movie about who you. Would, who would play you? Oh, jeez. Uh, Robin Williams. What's one thing people are generally surprised to find out about you? Um, that English isn't my first language. It's Dutch. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I was I'm born su- there. I'm surprised. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you currently looking forward to the most? Pretty keen to go home at this point been on the road now for five weeks and go home see my friends and ride my mountain bike describe snowy mountains grammar school in one word community so if you had a chance to teleport back into your school age self what would you tell yourself to stop doing like any bad habits or and what would you tell yourself to keep doing i think i'd probably tell myself to relax a little bit you know I, I, working hard is good don't get me wrong i tell myself to keep working hard but also not be in that much of a rush and feel like you've only got this tiny window of opportunity in your early 20s or whatever it is you don't you've got so much time like i still feel so young i'm 28 next week and yeah i think when i was when i was 17 18 i just thought i had to do everything right now and like i say it's good to work hard but also cut yourself some slack relax and enjoy the moments in between. Anything you'd tell yourself to keep doing? Uh, work hard. So thank you so much, Carl, for sharing your journey with us. It's been inspiring to hear about all your experiences and achievements. No worries. Uh, so that wraps up this episode of Welcome Back. Carl, we hope you enjoyed reconnecting with us. And listeners, we hope you enjoyed reconnecting with Carl. We are really proud of our amazing alumni and feel inspired by their stories. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on YouTube and Spotify for more interviews coming up. Join us next time when we'll be talking with Tim Winshuttle, who is the MTV Events Manager for Thurbo. You won't want to miss it. Thank you for listening and until next time. This is Abby and Gracie signing off and remember, you're always welcome back. And we've got a little, little gift present. for you. Oh, just to say thank you for coming in. Thank you. That's awesome. And a little coaster. For the coaster as well. Yeah.